Hello, Fight Fans. I'm that boxing writer, Jeremy Harridges, and thank you for watching. Make sure to click subscribe in the bottom right-hand corner and uh, help me keep this adventure going. Well, we're two days removed from Teofimo Lopez's victory over Vasily Lomachenko, and he's now the undisputed lightweight champion of the world. I know a lot of people take some sort of uh, stance against calling him undisputed. I don't know how that they can do that. Considering that Lomachenko was elevated to the franchise status of the WBC championship, and I know I'm not a huge fan of the franchise title. I'm just not a huge fan of titles in general when you have any organization throwing out multiple titles, whether it's the WBA or the WBC. I'd prefer to see fewer titles than more titles. But regardless, when you have that franchise status on there, um, you know, Vasily Lomachenko was the rightful WBC champion. Tiafimo Lopez defeated him. And to me, that's the end of the story right there. Um, so congratulations. Congratulations to Tiafimo Lopez. It's well-deserved. He did a fantastic job, and he did everything that he needed to do. So quickly taking a look back at that, I wanted to highlight a few moments that I really think show Tiafimo Lopez's growth and strength as a boxing champion. I think there are numerous things that he did that were understated. And he even explained to me during my couple questions during the press conference, uh, explained some, some little minute, subtle things that he did that I think really show the growth and, and the development of his ring IQ. You're talking about a young 23-year-old man who took a master in Vasily Lomachenko, 396-1 in the amateurs, two-time gold medalist, uh, multi-world champion during the amateurs. Tiafimo Lopez had a good amateur career, but he didn't have anywhere near those kind of credentials. And what he's learned during his time as a professional, it's absolutely astounding. He's done such a great job, not just physically, which he is a physical specimen, but mentally. And I think he highlighted that in the couple questions that I asked him, and we'll take a look at those in a second. But I have a real problem when people start knocking Vasily Lomachenko for losing to Tiafimo Lopez. People saying that he wasn't that great, he was always overrated, yada, yada, yada. I don't think he was ever overrated. I really think that he was the number two pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. Uh, and I have no shame in saying that. And the thing is, when you have a young up-and-comer, we don't know if this person's going to be... Uh, he, he, and we shouldn't say up-and-comer. He was a champion, right? You have a young champion. When is a young champion going to make that jump from young champion to pound for pound great? Well, they need to overcome a challenge and not just a little challenge, a big challenge. And that's what Tiafimo Lopez did. He got presented one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world and he beat him. That alone means that he deserves to be ranked in the pound for pound rankings. Tiafimo Lopez is that good. Now, again, you have a lot of young guns that are calling him out now, whether it's uh, Ryan Garcia or Devin Haney. Hey, you want to be a legend? You want to be a pound-for-pound -pound great? Then you have to overcome a challenge, too. And at this point, whether it's a, a guy like Vasily Lomachenko or Tiafima Lopez, you overcome one of those two guys and show that you are the better boxer, you're the better fighter, you're a pound-for-pound -pound great in my mind. And I think that's what's so exciting about some of those lower divisions, whether we're talking super featherweight, lightweight, uh, super lightweight. I think that those divisions are loaded with talent. And I think you are going to see a number of those young guns that step up and become pound-for-pound -pound greats. And right now people say, oh, pound-for-pound, pound-for-pound. They're not pound-for-pound -pound greats yet, minus Tiafima Lopez, until they do something great, until they beat somebody great. But the second they do that, hey, you're in the pound-for-pound -pound rankings. That's it. And I know people don't necessarily like to talk about pound-for-pound, -pound, and, and it can be a bit of an arbitrary term. However, it does mean something. It means that you're one of the best boxers in the world. You're one of the elite when you get your name in that conversation. And I think that a lot of those young fighters, I'm not going to say which ones in particular, I think a lot of those young fighters have the potential to beat some of the biggest names out there and throw their names into the conversation. Tiafima Lopez deserves to be a top 10 pound for pound fighter. Vasily Lomachenko, I don't think he necessarily deserves to be bounced off that list yet. A loss to a guy that's better, that's that good, 
I still think Teofimo Lopez, or excuse me, I still think that Vasily Lomachenko is amazing and still deserves to be in the pound-for-pound pound rankings. I don't think he deserves to be dropped off just because he had a loss against an amazing boxer. Teofimo Lopez is better than I think anybody thought he was, and he proved that and he deserves credit. few things. Some people inexplicably think that Vasily Lomachenko won that fight. There's murmurings that, oh, no, it was a bad scorecard. It was this, it was that. It's nonsense. And listen, CompuBox numbers don't state the entire picture of the fight. But as I always say, they're a wonderful metric to help evaluate a boxer's performance. Now, I'm looking at some of the stats right here. And I'm sorry, I'm looking at my computer and it's, and it's very small. Let me move the mic for a second. Um, when you look at the the CompuBox numbers, they tell us a few things. Number one, Lopez was the much more active fighter within this fight, which anybody who was watching, I mean, Vasily Lomachenko took the entire first half of the fight off. And, and that's not because his game plan was entirely flawed. I think just he couldn't find a way in on the bigger, stronger Teofimo Lopez. And I think that when he tried to get in, he felt Teofimo Lopez's power and decided against that, that that's not very wise. The smart thing that Teofimo Lopez did, he invested to the body early and he did not stop doing that. Smart. Smart. I'm going to use that word smart a lot because that's what Teofimo Lopez is. He's smart. He's a very smart fighter. Investing to the body from round one on... And he even said to me after the fight, during the press conference, he thought he was going to take me into deep waters and, and make me run out of gas. Well, if you're attacking the body of your opponent, who's going to be the first one that runs out of gas? He depleted the reserves of Lomachenko, which is why he couldn't pull it together towards the end of the fight. Um, but if we just look at the numbers, Vasily Lomachenko threw a total of 321 punches. Compare that to Lopez, who threw a total of, again, it's very small print here, 659 punches. I mean, he threw less than half. He being Vasily Lomachenko threw less than half of the punches of Teofimo Lopez. That tells you everything you need to know right there. Lopez was working. Lomachenko didn't work hard enough. So if we're talking about effort, Lopez gets the easy win there. Total punches landed. Teofimo Lopez landed 183. Lomachenko 141. Yes, Lomachenko was more accurate, but he still got outworked. And to me, it takes work, it takes effort. And Tiafimo Lopez had that work, had that effort. Lomachenko tried to play it a little bit too, too cool um, and wait till the end. And I don't know what he thought he was going to get out of it. Did he really think that he was going to pull a, a knockout? He's a, a, a decent knockout puncher. I mean, he's like 66% KO rating. But that doesn't mean that you're the kind of guy that can, can spark someone towards those later rounds, especially not a guy like Teofimo Lopez, who's never, who's never been even close to, to hurt in a fight. So I think that's something that people have to remember. And I wonder if Vasily Lomachenko is a little bit shell-shocked from his past. Um, take his second fight against uh, Salido, right? I think the Salido fight may have taught him, whoa, you need to pace yourself. You can't fight like an amateur anymore. You can't just throw it all out there at the beginning. Um, pace it out. The problem was his pacing wasn't very good. It went from nothing to something. Um, there has to be more of a gradual increase. But again, I think Tiafimo Lopez's skills and his ability and his strength and his power and his quickness. If you look at the punch speed, you know, everyone assumed that Vasily Lomachenko's hand speed would be the difference, that his hands are much faster. Now, I think Lomachenko is still the quicker fighter, but he met a guy that could equal him in hand speed and had all of these other physical advantages. And the other advantage, we all assumed, or at least I assumed, that Lomachenko would be the smarter of the two fighters, considering his amateur background. Lopez showed that he's smarter. Um... During the press conference, I asked him about the end of the fight, where it looked, especially in round 11, that Lomachenko was coming on, was going for the knockout. He stopped moving his hands. Was he hurt? Was he tired? What was going on? And he gave me a fantastic answer. Let's take a look at the video. All right. Okay. And play. Uh, during the end, or at least towards the end of the fight, um, 
how fatigued were you feeling? Uh, did you feel uh, relatively fresh at that point? Was there any point where you felt like you needed a second wind to kick in? Um, no, I felt good. Overall, I just, uh, what I did was I baited him in to get that. He tried to take me to the deep waters, and what I did, I reversed it on him by letting him tee off, whatever, and let him get comfortable, but let him get tired. I started hearing him huff and puff. Little by little, I started realizing he was gassing out. And every time we sat down in the corner, he would take big, deep breaths. And I noticed that. I always look at the, my opponent and see what they do when, once they sit down for the next round. And I noticed that with him. Um, so I still compose. That was my whole thing. In order to do what you got to do, I have that second win. I have all that already lined up. I have that third win if I need to. So um, I was two steps ahead of Lomachenko. All right. I'm going to stop it there. The fact that he's saying <laughs> that he baited him in, I mean, that's a fantastic answer. Were you tired? Were you hurt? Nope. It was all part of the plan. I wanted him to think that I was tired. I wanted him to think that I was hurt. You can believe it or not. I tend to believe it. That's incredibly smart right there. Get the other guy to think that you're wasting away, powering down, and then flip it on him. The next round, he's awake. He's finishing strong. He's winning around that, you know, that he didn't have to win, but boy, did it sure put the cherry on top. Such a smart answer. I also like the fact that he's sitting there studying his opponent in the corner. Think about that. He's sitting there after just fighting rounds, right? He's sitting there in the corner, staring into the corner, looking at his opponent and trying to read his body language. How intelligent is that? How often do you hear fighters saying that same thing? Not often. And this is coming from a 23-year-old, now undisputed lightweight champion. He's using everything to his advantage. He's observing, taking in everything. I know people like to talk about Lomachenko likes to download, download information, download what the other guy does. That's downloading. Download information. Capture what's going on around you at all times. Be completely aware. That's what Tiafimo Lopez did. How smart is that? Gotta love that. That is true ring intelligence. Um, I talk more about that in my weekly column. If you haven't checked it out, it's called After the Fight. It comes out every Sunday, usually by, by afternoon to late afternoon after I've had some time to rest because I was on the two o'clock in the morning with, with Tiafima Lopez on the media call. Um, so check that out. I go into more of a deep dive um, on what I think about Lopez. And he had a bit of, uh, he got a bit angry towards the end of the post-fight press conference. And the way I explain that is I think that it's all of the emotions that are hitting him. I mean, think about what emotional moment that is. The moment that you've reached your lifetime goal in your dream at the age of 23, those emotions are gonna be gonna come pouring out. All of his frustrations, all of his anger, I think got uh, triggered a little bit at the end and not anything that a reporter said necessarily that was really that bad. Um, I thought all the questions were great questions and fair. Um, there was one question talking to him about um, building his brand in the future and his potential to be a superstar. And I think that kind of hit him like, hey, I've wanted to be this for a long time. Why haven't I gotten here faster now? I think 23 is pretty fast to get there, but there's no doubt that a lot of work has gone into it. And I think just all the memories and the naysayers and the bad opportunities and the bad, just the bad things that have happened to him in the past all came out at that moment and he just released them. Um, but I do talk about that more in my column after the fights, but uh, it's going to be really interesting to see Tiafimo Lopez continue to grow. I mean, we're talking about a fighter who's not even in his prime yet. 23, he's got so much more to grow, and that's the scary part. If he's this good now, if he's this smart, this intelligent, whoa, then, then his bounds are limitless. But right now, if you ask me, yeah, he's a pound-for-pound -pound talent, for sure. He's the undisputed lightweight champion of the world. Congratulations, Tiafimo Lopez. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe. Check me out on fansided.com slash boxing. Also, my personal website, thatboxingwriter.com. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.